So can you notice anything different here? Yep, finally got it trimmed up. Not so shaggy anymore after all this stuff. But uh, we are on Vandy Band Series 17 already, and we're gonna be looking at the idiophones, the percussion family, uh, part one of the percussion family review. Okay, band members, so we're going to be going over the mallet percussion, which are all idiophones, because you hit or strike those with the mallet. Remember, the mallet has a rod, and then at the end of that rod, it's going to have a ball. Um, typically, you're going to see plastic or maybe even yarn mallets. Um, you may see them played on different type of instruments, like mallets or cymbals or something like that. Um, also, you may see a brass mallet that could be uh, for a metal uh, mallet instrument maybe, but you gotta be careful with brass mallets. Don't just hit them on any metal barred instrument. You gotta make sure that it won't dent the, uh, dent the key. So you gotta be careful with those type of things. So the first one we are going to look at is called the orchestral bells or glockenspiel. Here's also the Sorcerer's Apprentice on the orchestral bells or glockenspiel. So you will see underneath the mallet instruments, sometimes you'll see these things underneath of them. Those are called resonators. Resonators are like uh, what a guitar is when it goes in and echoes, right? So a resonator, will, it will, the sound will hit it and it will come out and it will resonate. So it means the hold out. So resonate means the hold out. So that's what the, that is underneath those mallet instruments. It's called a resonator. So these instruments are called mallet percussion. That's what it'll say on the part a lot of times. It may even say keyboard percussion because uh, they are set up just like a keyboard or like a piano, right? With the flats and sharps. Uh, it will not have white and black keys like the piano, but it is set up just similar to that. Also, each instrument may have a different amount of keys. So that is called the octave amount that it has. So if it has three and a half octaves, then it would have that amount of octaves on the instrument. If it has four and a half, it, it will have that many octaves. So remember octave is eight notes. So that is pretty cool that we learned this about the instruments today. So this next instrument name we've heard a lot, it's called the xylophone. The xylophone starts with an X. So it's X-Y-L-O xylophone. Um, like I said, it depends on the octave amount that you have, and you will see the resonators now, so take a look at that and try to see how many octaves you can kind of see in, in these videos as best you can. This first xylophone piece is a very fast piece and the final uh, ending to Carmen the Opera.
Also, I want you to see that there's some made of metal, some made of plastic, a synthetic type of uh, bar, or you'll see even some wood bars here uh, pretty soon as well. Uh, just take a listen to the difference of these instruments, uh, what they look like and how they're different. Remember, some of these synthetic ones will have a paint on it, and a lot of times it looks like brownish or purplish brown type of color, but that's just paint on the bars. Also, you'll see in these mallet instruments that you can have two mallets, but as you progress and get more advanced in your playing in mallets, you could have three mallet, four mallet, and so on. So you'll see that in some of these um, performances today. I also forgot to tell you it could be rubber mallets on the end as well. This next xylophone solo is called Sparks, and it looks pretty neat because it, uh, they blindfold the player, so uh, just enjoy this one. This next percussion instrument is called the marimba, the mallet instrument. Marimba gets its name from Africa. Many times this instrument will be made out of wood, have wood bars, so just see how it sounds differently. Um, try to take a look at the octave amount if you can, and enjoy the marimba. This last mallet instrument that we're taking a look at is called the vibraphone or vibes. Um, you'll see this as a solo instrument, maybe even in jazz music. Um, it will have a pedal at the bottom where it can sustain or hold the notes out just like a piano can um, or other instruments like that. So the percussion family has so many instruments that you can look at. I'm just going to quickly go through the auxiliary instruments. Auxiliary just means extra, A-U-X-I-L-I-A-R-Y, auxiliary, just means extra. So we're going to take a look at some auxiliary percussion that are also idiophones quickly. This first auxiliary instrument is called the tubular bells or bell chimes. To play the bell chimes or the tubular bells, you're gonna use a mallet, and typically it's gonna be like a rawhide mallet, not just a regular, just hammer. They look hammer-like, but you're not gonna use a regular hammer, you're gonna use a uh, like a rawhide hammer, a softer type of hammer. 
So bell chimes you will play similar to a mallet type instrument where it has the notes and the note name on the bell itself, but these bells are actually cylindrical shaped or tube shaped. That's why it's got tubular bell. Um, and it will have a pedal at the bottom where it can sustain the note or you can release off of it. It will dampen the note and you hit it on the edge of those tubes at the top and um, hit it with a rawhide soft hammer. The last auxiliary instrument was called chimes, bell chimes or tubular bells. Most of the time you'll see chimes on the part. This next auxiliary instrument is called the wind chimes. So there's the difference. So the next auxiliary instrument is called the gong. It's sometimes referred to as a tam-tam, but most parts nowadays say gong that uh, comes from China. Before we go on to the gong, remember we can use drumsticks for percussion, we can use mallets, we can use hammers, we can use beaters. So we're gonna use different things uh, for the percussion instruments. Sometimes you might even be crashing them together like a, a uh, crash cymbal or something like that. It's a very simple instrument in many ways. It's a large piece of beaten metal, quite thick. This one's about 34 inches across. And we play it nearly always with a large, soft mallet, like this one. I think what's interesting about the tam-tam sound is the way it develops. It actually grows after you've struck it. We can capitalize on that by sustaining the sound with repeated strokes quite gently and create really some quite extraordinary crescendo effects. Remember our next auxiliary instruments are called the cymbals. Remember it's C-Y-M-B-A-L-S, cymbals, the instrument cymbals. So we're going to see crash cymbals, we're going to see suspended cymbals, and even uh, finger cymbals. Symbols have probably the longest history in all our percussion instruments. They're mentioned even in the Bible, in Psalm 150, for example. And they're very familiar to us now as part of an orchestral section. They're very simple. They produce just a single sound, no pitch, no harmony. Symbol player playing that single large loud symbol crash. Yeah, as a single instrument, the suspended symbol, often used with a single soft stick. Some dramatic crescendos and diminuendos. Short and sharp, or quite long, or we can play in different parts of the instrument, on the dome, right at the edge, or somewhere in between the two. Above, and move one vertically so that the edges strike together. Like that. So hold them this way so that they're above your fingers and then hold them at about a 90 degree angle to each other and strike the corners together. The next idiophone percussion instrument is a varied type of cymbal. It's actually called a hi-hat, H-I hyphen H-A-T. Hi-hat cymbals are typically on drum sets and there's two different cymbals. 
uh, that have a pedal attached to them that will open and close the, those two symbols and you can hit on those symbols and we're going to see some variations on those hi-hat symbols right now. The last set of percussion instruments in the auxiliary family, which are idiophones, that we're going to listen to are going to be the cowbell, the sleigh bell, the temple block, the wood block, and then finally the triangle. Remember, there's all kinds of percussion instruments out there, like ratchets, rattles, all kinds of things that we're not going to get to because there's just way too many. If you play on the top, you're going to use the tip of your stick. Just tap gently top of the cowbell. To play on the mouth, use the shoulder or the edge of the stick to play on the mouth of the bell. And you can mute the sound by placing more pressure on the bottom with your finger or unmute it by releasing that position. tip of the stick. You can also use a hard mallet to strike the wood block. triangle is exactly what it says it is. It's a triangle of metal opened at one corner to allow the instrument to vibrate. And we can play it with quite a thick stick, rather like this, or quite a thin stick like this, or even occasionally with a wooden stick. In the top corner, or maybe the side corner of the instrument, like this. Like I said, there's so many percussion instruments out there, we could go over them for days. Uh, so we're going to cut this off short now. And that is the uh, review on the percussion idiophones.